life will become difficult towards the end. Challenges will come. Disasters will come. Catastrophes will come. The earth will be covered in injustice and in wars and in battles. And you see that today. Look at the Arab Spring. Look at Syria. Look at Africa. Look at what's happening there in Russia. Mankind is becoming more and more unstable and unhappy and miserable and in difficulty and in turmoil. And when the earth is covered with injustice as it is going towards that direction, the Prophet ﷺ gives us the glad tidings of a righteous ruler who will come. Now about this righteous ruler, the Prophet ﷺ says he will fill the earth up with justice and peace as it was filled with oppression and wrong. Good days will come after these difficulties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to lift this ummah from its absolute misery and feeble state that it is now. He's going to lift it back up to its victorious, honorable state, back to its nobleness that it once carried, this ummah. From once being united to our disunity today, it will return back to the unity. It's going to return back to its glory. It will become the leading nation of the world in every sense of the word as it once was before and even better. And with regards to this ruler, a thousand and fifty ahadith have been narrated, of which four are sahih. The Prophet wasallam, at his time, one day he came at Dhuhr to the masjid and started to speak about the signs of the end. That this is what will happen and this is what will And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke from Dhuhr until Asr. And then they gave the adhan for Asr. They stood up. They prayed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood back up and started to speak again from Asr until Maghrib. And in that way he continued and the Ashab say he mentioned and went through every sign and we remembered what we could remember and forgot what we forgot. So amidst those signs that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, he mentions this hadith. And I want you to listen to it carefully. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, تَكُونُ النُّبُوَّةُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَن تَكُونَ ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُهَا اللَّهُ إِذَا شَاءَ أَن يَرْفَعَهَا Prophethood will stay amidst you. So long as Allah Rabbul Izza wishes for it to remain. Then Allah Rabbul Izza will lift up prophethood and prophethood would be no more. And we knew our witnesses that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. Prophethood was lifted and prophethood is no more. So Ya Rasul, what will happen after prophethood? So he said, ثُمَّ تَكُونُ خِلَافَةً رَاشِدًا فَتَكُونُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَن تَكُونَ ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُهَا اللَّهُ إِذَا شَاءَ أَن يَرْفَعَهَا then will come the age of the rightly guided Khulafa, the rightly guided Khalifas of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They will reign amidst you so long as Allah Rabbul Izza wishes for them to reign. Then Allah Rabbul Izza will lift up the reign of the rightly guided. Ya Rasul, what will come after them? ثم تكون ملكا عادا فتكون فيكم ما شاء الله أن تكون ثم يرفعها الله إذا شاء أن يرفعها Then will come an age where rulership and leadership is passed within tribes as in it will become tribal or it will become legacy and lineage based This king, the son of this king One will handball it to the one after them فَتَكُونُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَن تَكُونَ Then this age will stay amidst you so long as Allah Rabbul Izzah wishes for it to stay. Then Allah Rabbul Izzah will lift this age up from amidst you. ثُمَّ تَكُونُ مُلْكًا جَبْرِيًّا Then will come a tyrannical rule, an oppressive rule. And it will last amidst you so long as Allah Rabbul Izzah wishes it to last. ثم يرفعها الله إذا شاء أن يرفعها. Then Allah رب العزة will lift up this age when He عز وجل wishes to remove that age. Then what will come after this age of tyranny and oppression? Listen, O Muslims, and glad tidings to you. ثم تكون خلافة على منهاج النبوة. Then will come the age of the rightly guided Khalif who will lead in accordance to the teachings of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And with regards to him, he is famous amidst us as the Mahdi. Literally in Arabic, Al-Mahdi means in English, the awaited one and the anointed one. So the chosen awaited one. 
And the Mahdi, some scholars say he's born now, and others they say not yet. The minor signs make it a possibility that he probably is right now here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The Rasul says, Al Mahdi min itrati min waladi Fatima. The Mahdi is from my lineage, as in from my progeny, from the children of Fatima. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, His name will be my name. So his name will be Muhammad. And his father's name will be my father's name. So he will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And as the earth was filled with wrong and oppression, he will fill it with justice and peace. And this righteous ruler, Ali radiallahu anhu says, Al Mahdi minna ahl al bayt. The Mahdi is from us, from the family of the Prophet. Yuslihuhu Allahu fi layla. Allah Rabbul Izza will prepare him for the office of leadership in one night. So the Mahdi doesn't know he is the Mahdi. And the Mahdi doesn't have the competencies of the Mahdi. Until one night, in one night Allah will transform him. The Ahadith mention that a king will die in the Jazeera, in the Arab Peninsula. And the sons or three sons of a king will fight and quarrel over leadership. And to avoid this quarrel, this man, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, will leave Medina in secret and go to Mecca. Because he doesn't want to be involved in the conflict, nor does he want people to turn towards him. So when he goes to Mecca, his aim is to avoid getting tangled up in this leadership struggle. Yet people follow him from Medina into Mecca. And they find him and they take him out. And they bring him to the Kaaba. And there, between the, the Rukn, as in Hajr al Aswad, and Maqam Ibrahim, they will make bay'ah to him when he doesn't want it. And as soon as they have pledged allegiance, two things will happen. Number one, an army will march out from Syria to attack this progeny of the Rasul. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen carefully, is in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And he is asleep. And in his sleep, he starts to move. He looks uncomfortable. He's displaying what he's never displayed before. Discomfort and sleep to the extent that he's moving. Then he got up. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have seen you do what you normally do not do. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Strange is the situation. An army will come from Syria, intending the house of Allah, from my ummah, seeking a man from my progeny to attack him. So the first people in Mahdi will fight are Arabs who are under the banner of Islam, but they've erred, gone wrong. They will hear about the Mahdi and they will not agree with him. They, they, they'll say he is not the real one. And they will come from an eastern direction of Mecca. They'll come in with an army to fight Al-Mahdi. An army will come campaigning towards the Kaaba until it reached the Bayda. And Bayda is an expanse of land between Mecca and Medina, flat desert land. When it reaches there, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَخْصَفُ بِأَوَّلِهِمْ وَآخَرِهِمْ The earth will suck them in their first and their last. And in another call, one person or a couple of people will be left just to tell the tale. So this is... One of the signs that this one is the one the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intended. First that his name will be my name and his na the name of his father will be my father's name. Second, an army will come to attack him and he will be unarmed and the army will be destroyed by Allah alone. So when this happens, realize that this is the one. And the people that realize it, Initially, or the first batch that go towards him is from our lands, from Khurasan. The black flags will rise from the areas of Afghanistan. And the flags will come towards him. And they will traverse through the land until they come in help of the Mahdi. And his time is a difficult era. The Rasul says it in an eloquence befitting the majesty of the Rasul. Listen carefully, Muslims. Taghzuna Jazeerat al-Arab. Allah. You will campaign in the Arab Peninsula and Allah will open it. Prophet said he will fight offsprings of two Khalifas. And we've had many Khalifas in the past. We've had the Ottoman Empire, we've had the Abbasi, the Fatimi, we've had the Umawi Khilafah, we've had many different. And when he says the offsprings, meaning of them. 
Allahu A'lam which ones exactly. But the first ones are Arabs. Allahu A'lam they could be of the Abbasi or the Umawi ones. And he said he will wipe them off. And the companions asked, O Messenger of Allah, what if among those Muslims who fight him are proper Muslims, but they've just erred and they die within that battle like that? What's going to happen to them? Rasul said, every one of them will be gathered on the day of judgment on the intentions they died for, on the intentions they died for, even if they were the wrong army. Then there will be a campaign against the Persians. Allah, and Allah will open it. Persia those days, today is known as Iran. Then there will be a campaign against Rome and Allah will open it. He called it Al-Malhamatul Kubra. Prophet called it Al-Malhamatul Kubra. And a lot of the scholars say Al-Mahdi will be leading this. Al-Malhamatul Kubra. The gigantic war, the gigantic combat. He will fight the Romans. Ar-Rum. In those days, Ar-Rum are different, or are, had a different name to what we have today. It's a bit difficult to pinpoint them, but our scholars tell us point towards the Europeans, Europeans in general. And Ar-Rum, who are the Byzantines then, are today, today the offsprings are mostly the Europeans and their branches. And at the last campaign, the Muslims will come and the other side, its opposition will come to face it. And the opposition is so huge, 80 banners, 80 different flags, under each flag, 12,000 men. And when the two sides meet and the Muslims see this, a third of them will run away. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. Because running away reduces and destroys the morale of everyone standing. So then the campaign starts and the battle is hot and it's intense. You will see the flying object or the birds or whatever is flying on the outskirts of this war. It's got nothing to do with the war. It'll drop from the sky. It'll drop. And if some scholars look at it and you can probably analyze it as being atomical warfare. Gases that make birds and objects in the sky fall. That is flying on the edges. It's got nothing to do with the war. will drop from the sky. This is the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu And a third of the Muslims will die. And a third will be victorious. Just a third will be victorious. And they will be there on the battlefield collecting the remnants and the booty of war. And the hadith says, from one tribe, 99 have died and one person is left. So what joy will he have at victory and what joy will he have at collecting booty? So you would think after such a calamity, after such a colossal engagement, or what is referred to in the books that preceded us as Armageddon, you would have expected issues to become more relaxed. Yet, as they have just become victorious and are collecting the things of the battlefield, a voice will come out to them that, O Muslims, the Dajjal has come in your lands. Then the Dajjal will come and Allah will open it as in will let you conquer it. So the age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. And the Hadith says he will stay with you for seven years and maybe eight. And if it really extends nine years. And there will be no more poverty. A zakat system will be applied so solidly that he said there will be no poor people. People will come with their sadaqah, with their charity and their zakat and there will be no one to take it. No one's poor to take it. They'll say, no, no, I'm okay. See another person. He's, he used to be poor. You go to see him, there's no poor people. The Prophet wasallam says he will fill the earth up with justice and peace as it was filled with oppression and wrong.